startle you. I'm just doing a rebel yell here to kind of kick the Stan Freeberg show off. You know what I mean? There's the yellow rose in Texas that I am going to see. Nobody else could miss her, not half as much as me. I cried so when I excuse me. That, that's just a shade loud on the snare drum. I say that's just a shade loud. You idiot. Hold it, I'll say. Wait, wait a minute. What's all the noise about? Who are you? I'm Stan Freeberg. Well, how can that be? I mean, I'm Stan Freeberg. Well, I mean to say I'm the recorded Stan Freeberg, you know. Well, I'm the live Stan Freeberg, and I'll thank you to get back on the record, will you? Listen, you smart aleck Yankee. What do you mean, smart aleck Yankee? Be quiet, Freeberg, will you? You be quiet, Freeberg. I appreciate it. Yeah, but listen, what... Listen, you keep out of this, will you? You're on another record. Okay, hold it, hold it, you guys. Wait a minute, who are you? My name is St. George. I'm a knight. No, no, not you. I mean the uh, the other the other guy. I told you I'm Stan Freebird. Not you. I mean all these other people. We're we all Stan, Stan Freebird. Frighten, frighten. <laughs> people, 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 people. We've forgotten something. We forgot to open the show. This is the first show of the series of the brand new radio series. The CBS Radio Network presents The Stan Freeberg Show. With the music of Billy May. Plus the songs of Peggy Taylor with Dawes Butler, June Ferre, Peter Leeds, and the Judd Podlin Rhythm Airs. No use to look for us on TV Because in case you did not know We're being brought to you on Brought to you on Brought to you on our API Thank you very much. Well, it took so long to open the show that it's just time to say thank you for being with us and good night, everybody! <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Oh, oh Stan. Oh, uh, yes? Uh, the sheep have arrived. Oh, good. So I hear. From week to week, we will be bringing you, let us uh, just say, rather unusual guest attractions, including an interview with the abominable snowman, uh, blueprints for a build-it-yourself swamp, and 3D stereopticon slides of the Johnstown Flood with the original cast. <laughs> Today, however, in honor of Bastille Day, we bring you direct from the Basque region of France, uh, Monsieur Marcel Toulet and his original tuned sheep chorus. Uh, due to a linguistical barrier, Monsieur Toulet's friend, uh, Mr. Devereux, I believe it is, will interpret uh, for us. Is that uh, right, sir? Monsieur, <laughs> it's a great pleasure to interpret for CBS Radio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, the pleasure is ours, Mr. Uh, Devereux. Devereux. Uh, ask your friend, if you will, please, uh, what kind of sheep uh, these are. Monsieur Toulet, l'envers strong et le regardeau. He say gray one. <laughs> I see. Well, I, what are the little bells tied around the sheep's neck? I noticed that. Will you ask him what they are for? Uh, Monsieur Toulet. Long to visit up box is if on was ill. Ding, 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 ding. What? Eh, il a voulu. He say, a lot of sheep have bells, but these sheep are tuned so as to make the chromatic scales which he make use of by knocking the sheep on the head with his crook a signal to them to ring the bell. He do it like this. In this manner, he can play different songs. Well, that's very nice. I suppose he's going to play a little uh, Baba Black Sheep for us or <laughs> something equally as appropriate. I ask him, Monsieur Toulet, Dilamente Perrache, Baba Black Sheep. Je t'aime, Beret. Oh, he is very offended, monsieur. Yes, it sounded that. He says these sheep play only cool jazz, man. Well, tell him on uh, behalf of CBS Radio, I certainly didn't want to put down his sheep, but... Uh... 
He say, never mind, this no job. Just get on with it. I see. Well, tell him, okay. Come and say. Uh, that means start. Oh, that's very nice. Monsieur et madame. <laughs> Come and say. No, 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 Pierre, no, no, no. Henry, Henry, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, the project the better fair. Hey, the project better fair. Hey, no, please, please, yes, what? Yeah, project better. Thank you very much. So much for the tune sheep. She was worth all the trouble we went to. We uh, had a little jurisdictional dispute between the American Federation of Musicians and the 4-H Club. <laughs> Seriously, it is our plan to give occasionally on this series what I call, simply for want of a better title, Freeberg's Fables. Tonight we present our first one. Please remember that it is only a fable and any resemblance between the city we depict and any real Nevada city is purely... Coincidental. Ladies and gentlemen, we present Incident at Los Varosis. a mighty city and she worshipped a silver bird the dice were rolling and the living was high when that certain incident occurred it was 1960 when the incident occurred that's almost 10 years ago we feel it only fitting on the anniversary of the incident that we go back and reconstruct for you the events that led up to it. It all started with a notorious rivalry between the two famous Los Varosis nightclubs, the El Sodom and the Rancho Gomorrah. <laughs> Perhaps you recall the publicity. Early in 1960, the feud got pretty hot when the El Sodom owner, Sam Mohammed, opened his new club with an unusually lavish review. The usual line of chorus girls opened the show with all 386 teeth gleaming. We are the girls of the new El Sodom. Just look at us strut. We hope you came here with a lot of money to lose at the table. But if you didn't, we will loan you a G and take a second mortgage on your family. We are the girls of the new El Sodom. Hey, we got the... Whee! Following this tender opening was quite a musical extravaganza. They had borrowed the 120 Radio City Music Hall Rockettes, had 119 costume changes, and featured Fats Domino on the contrabassoon. They were doing Rock Around Romeo and Juliet, and business was booming. But so, what lies through yonder window breaks? <laughs> it is the east, and Juliet is the sun. 
Romeo, where the heck art thee? Oh, Romeo, where the heck art thee? Well, I'll be right up cause I dig your balcony. Oh, love has left its mark on me. My heart bears it just like the Marlboro Man's tattoo. <laughs> Was surely meant to be My heart wears it Laced up just like a blue suede shoe Rock, rock, rock around Tchaikovsky Rock, rock, rock around Shakespeare If we're shocking you here Next week we do the hot king Lear. Wherefore art thou my Romeo If you dig me Come on and go, man, go Hey, 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 boss. Hiya, Nevi. Boy, rock around Romeo and Juliet is really packing them in, huh? 25,000 people this show. Yeah, yeah, but listen. Ah, later, later. I want to catch the rest of the show. That new kid, Peggy Taylor, sings good, huh? Yeah, good. But Mr. Mohammed. The Rancho Gamora. What about the Rancho Gamora? The book in the World Orchestra. The World Orchestra? Oh, that's right. And it was big. Very big. The string section featured Yasha Heifetz, Yehudi Menuhin, the Budapest String Quartet, and Jack Benny. <laughs> on guitars, Les Paul, Andre Segovia, and Elvis Presley. On horns, the entire brass section of the New York Philharmonic, plus Shorty Rogers and Wingy Manone. At the quadruple keyboards, Arthur Rubenstein, Joe Fingers Carr, Liberace, and Harry Truman. <laughs> oh, yes, with Lawrence Welk on accordion. The whole thing, of course, was under the baton of Ina Ray Hutton. <laughs> And in the lounge, as an added attraction, twice nightly, a lover's spat between Elizabeth Taylor and Mike Todd. <laughs> the fact... <laughs> The fact that the World Orchestra, et al., was such a smash hit that the Rancho Gomorrah had to tear out the walls to seat 50,000 more people did not go unnoticed back at the El Sodom. Sam Mohammed and his sidekick, Nebi Knezer, had the biggest scheme afoot yet. The El Sodom finished the largest swimming pool in the world in record time. It was so large, in fact, an embarrassing number of guests perished trying to reach the other side. <laughs> and it was only when the club realized that their cash customers were being lost at sea, or rather lost at pool, <laughs> that they thoughtfully installed helicopter lifeguard service. <laughs> but the best was yet to come. Nebby, Nebby, I want a press conference in one hour. Uh, what is it, boss? Get all the wire services here. This is it. Florence Chadwick says she definitely will attempt to swim the pool. Well, the great day is here. There are more than 300,000 people lining the banks of the El Sodom pool. Where any second now, the, the very great uh, Florence Chadwick will attempt... <laughs> and there she goes! There she goes! He has just entered the water, and that's all from here for now. Take it away, Fred Norwalk, in helicopter number one. Uh, Fred Norwalk here. We can't quite see Miss Chadwick. We can, however, make out the Coast Guard cutters that are escorting her. Folks, I tell you, the view from here is really something. The magnificent Nevada scenery. The glorious sunlight reflecting off the slot machines lining the entire banks of the El Sodom pool placed there for the convenience of the spectators. Also alternating between the slot machines are telescopes, through which the customers may get a free look at Miss Chadwick every single time they hit the jackpot. Oh, uh, that noise you hear in the background is a slot machine here in the helicopter being operated by our pilot, George Snoozov. 
I, um, I still can't quite make out Miss Chadwick. Perhaps if we can get Jim Ryan over in helicopter number two to come in. He's flying at a lower altitude. Thank you, Fred Norwalk. Jim Ryan here in helicopter number two. Will you hold down the slot machine there, Perry? Thank you. I can't see Miss Chadwick too well. Matter of fact, we can't see her at all. But we sure, we sure got a beautiful view of the now famous floating crap games. <laughs> We're going to switch you over to helicopter number three, our television plane. Perhaps they, through the miracle of electronics, can see Miss Chadwick. I know they're really way up there, so come in, Wings Badly, in helicopter number three. Wings Badly here in helicopter number three. We are really up here. I think we are as high as man has gone in a helicopter. Hope you can read me clearly as I am talking through my oxygen mask. Uh, George, can you switch on the telescopic lens yet on the camera? No. Well, keep trying. <laughs> and so it went. It was quite a day at the El Sodom. And a good time was had by all, except, of course, at the Rancho Gomorrah. Oh, incidentally, Miss Chadwick didn't make it. <laughs> it was flatly denied by the Rancho Gomorrah boys that they had tampered with her hot, nourishing broth. Well, Bruna, baby, you did such a good job tampering with Miss Chadwick's hot, nourishing broth that we are thinking of giving you a raise. Well, gee, thanks, Mr. Belchamp. You can call me Lou. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Lou. Hey, boss, boss. Yeah, Flack. I, I got it all set up. Uh, we're going to make that Chadwick thing at the El Sodom look like a Sunday school picnic. Did you set the deal? <laughs> you set it. What's the pitch, Flack? What are we booking in? The 1960 presidential inauguration on stage. Twice a night. They understand that, don't they? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's in the deal. Okay. What do we call the show? The inaugurities of 1960. Oh, what a title. Um, have you got the uh, choreography worked out? Yeah. Get a load of this. Two lines of girls. Big, you know. Yeah. One line I got in Supreme Court justice robes. The other line is dressed in scanty versions of the suit the president will wear. Oh, gee, that's great. They all have their left hands on copies of the Nevada phone books and their right hands raised in the air like they're swearing in. Except they ain't swearing in, they're trucking on down. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, it's got real class. Yeah. Well, what's the music like? Come on, they're rehearsing the show. Swear me in, Scooby Ruby, swear me in, Scooby Ruby, swear me in. I got the inauguration blues. Clean out the White House, got those 1960 presidential inauguration blues. Booking the inaugural was a stroke of genius, and what with coming on stage twice a night and being held over for eight weeks, this president was inaugurated more times than Franklin Delano Roosevelt. <laughs> no show ever opened without critics, however, and there were a few. Luella Parsons took a dim view of the proceedings. They seated her behind a post. <laughs> Back at the El Sodom, however, they took a dimmer view than Miss Parsons. Sam Mohammed, the El Sodom owner, was livid. If those bums at the Rancho Gamora think Sam Mohammed is going to take this lion down, they're out of their skulls. We aren't whipped yet. Yeah, but boss, we, uh, I think we're doing good business. I put in the well twice a night in the pool. <laughs> good, but not great. Besides, we're running out of whales. Whales is hard to come by in Nevada. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right, but, uh, I mean, haven't we been packing them in the lounge? Oh, certainly. Grace Kelly's baby splashing in her bathinette is a smash. <laughs> but we're gonna go bigger than that. Oh, what could be bigger than that? Plenty. Now, oh, hand me those papers there, Nabby, huh? Now, what's the biggest thing in the headlines? Well, let's see. Ah, this is it, right here. Why, why, this... 
There's nothing there but the Suez Crisis. Well, that's it. We're going to book the Gaza Strip. <laughs> Boss, um, I mean, uh, w- we're going to move the club to the Gaza Strip Nebby, my boy, you missed the point. Sam Mohammed doesn't have to go to the Gaza Strip. Here's a flash. The Gaza Strip is coming to Mohammed. <laughs> Sam Mohammed, Las Ferrosis, Nevada's gambling biggie, uh, has booked an international incident into his plush nightery, uh, the El Sodom. He is flying in by continuous airlift three quarters of a mile of the Gaza Strip. Complete. With soldiers and implements of war. Yes, they cut it into hundred foot sections and numbered the sections the way William Randolph Hearst used to move great treasures of art to San Simeon. The pictures of a hundred foot section of sand with 14 Egyptian soldiers wearing full battle dress and bewildered looks being snatched off to Nevada (laughs) made the cover of life. (laughs) And when it was pointed out to Sam Muhammad that the booking of a war into Los Verosis would cause many people to lose their lives, he replied, People are going to have wars anyway. Why blame me? And on that philosophical note, the Gaza Strip was reassembled in the new Suez Room. (laughs) Built to accommodate three quarters of a million people in addition to the battle area. For the convenience of the soldiers, Sam placed crap tables, slot machines, and roulette wheels right between the front lines. You couldn't say Sam Muhammad wasn't a thoughtful man. You couldn't say he wasn't shrewd either. Just as protection in case the international incident was rained out, he had some interesting added attractions. In the lounge, a rare phonograph record of Adolf Hitler singing, I didn't raise my boy to be a soldier. (laughs) And in the garage, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre with the original cast. Now, you wouldn't book an international incident on stage complete with two armies, count them, two, and live ammunition without a chorus line and original music. And neither would Sam. Gaza Strip! Gaza Strip! Life for a chorus girl isn't easy to begin with, but there were extracurricular hazards for the El Sodom girls, including jumping in and out of foxholes gracefully and tap dancing on sand. (laughs) Due to unanticipated expenses, the El Sodom went over their budget. There was quite a turnover in dealers who had been forced to work the tables in no man's land. All in all, 228 dealers, croupiers, and shills bit the felt. (laughs) But so it wasn't a total loss. They sold the screen rights to Universal International with a tentative title, They Died With Their Eye Shades On. (laughs) If you think the fellows at the Grancho Gomorra were taking this lying down, they were. By the pool. Rub a little bit of that suntan oil between my shoulder blades, will you, Gruner, baby? I got delicate skin. Mm -hmm. Sure thing, Mr. Belshazzar. Say, if you don't mind me saying so, you're taking this pretty calm for a man who just lost a quarter of a million people to the El Sodom. Boss, 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 I got it. Got what? The way we can top the El Sodom. So you got it all worked out, huh? Well, that's nice. Well, look, I mean... Booking the Gaza Strip hurt the El Sodom in the long run. The war got a bad press. It did a pretty good business. They packed them in. Yeah, but the newspapers criticized them for booking a war. So 
Here's the way I figure it. We'll pull the big switch and book peace. It'll be a smash. Look, I can see the headlines in Variety now. Peace, powerful box office, may start trend. Gee, Mr. Belshazzar, that sounds great. Shut up, grown-up baby. <laughs> Listen, Flack, when I want your ideas, I'll ask for them. But, boss, you didn't let me finish. We'll, we'll book a summit conference. We'll build our own summit. We'll plant grass on it. Where do we get the dirt? From the soil bank. I mean, they got lots of it. Okay, what do we put on the top of the summit? Well, oh, I can see it now. We arrange some chairs in a sort of semicircle. Then you know what we do? We book in the world leaders to sit in them. Yeah, and in between the chairs, we put special slot machines that'll uh, take, like, oh, francs, rubles, pounds, yen. This part I like. Then I'll have IBM start on the machines, huh? Sit down, sit down, grown up baby. We ain't gonna do it. Why, Why not? not? Because they booked one into Geneva and it laid an egg. <laughs> so we... we ain't gonna book peace. We can't take a chance on it. We're only gonna go for a sure thing at the box office. Well, what are we gonna do? I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna tear out the walls and make room for one million people. I'm through playing games with the El Sodom. I've been saving this for my Sunday punch. Some Sunday punch. It was bigger than Los Ferozis had imagined in their wildest dreams. And when the boys at the El Sodom saw the 500-foot neon sign go up at the Rancho Gomorrah, they could hardly believe it. The sign read, For all the world to see... The Rancho Gomorrah proudly presents for one time only on stage... The Hydrogen Bomb! <laughs> yes, everybody who thought he was anybody was there that night. In fact, there were more than a million people in the room when the gigantic machinery rolled back the roof and the great spotlight slowly slithered up the silver tower until it came to rest on that grim, spectral object. I wonder if the boys were still counting their profits when time ran out and the man pushed the button. was a golden city as the history writers all have penned but her days were numbered in that heavenly book and she pushed her own button in the end <laughs> So concludes our fable, Incident at Los Ferozis. And we'd really love to receive your comments. Sometime soon, we'll do another fable for you. Meanwhile, we'll all be back next week with, of all things, an interview with the abominable snowman, the inside story of the midnight ride of Paul Revere, and for you music lovers, the real lowdown on hi-fi in honor of Deafen Your Neighbors Week. <laughs> Plus uh, the, oh yes, the Lox Audio Theater with a stirring psychological drama entitled Kick Me Tender. <laughs> so until next week then, this is Stan Freeberg saying thanks for listening, God bless you, and good night.